In this video, we're going to learn what happens when the time function in C is past the argument null. So we see this a fair bit in C examples online. The time function will be past the argument null. When the time function is past the argument null, it's going to return the current time. Now the time function is included in the time.h library. So we do have to include that library to use the function. Here we'll have include and then time.h. Now the time function is going to return the current time as a time underscore t type value. We could declare a time underscore t type variable called current time, and we could assign to current time the return value of calling time. Now according to the official C language standard, all we know for sure about time underscore t is that it's some kind of arithmetic type which can be used to represent time. But on most systems, time underscore t will be an integral type value. In other words, some kind of integer. And typically that integer time underscore t value is going to be the number of seconds since January 1st, 1970 at midnight. This date and time is what's called the Unix epoch and it's standard on many systems and C compilers to use the number of seconds since this date and time to measure time. So for example, with my system and compiler, the time function when it's past the argument null is going to return the number of seconds since this epoch. We can see that by outputting current time. We'll have here printf and then percent %ld to output a long type value, which is really a type of integer, followed by backslash n for a new line, and then we'll output current time here, and we'll save it, and compile it, and run it. And this big integer here is the number of seconds since that epoch. Let's do some math here to see if that works out. We'll copy it, and paste it down here, then we'll have dot zero zero to make sure that floating point division takes place. We'll divide the number of seconds by 60, which will give us the number of minutes since that epoch. We'll take that and divide it by 60, which will give us the number of hours since that epoch. We'll take that and divide it by 24, which will give us the number of days since that epoch. Then we'll take that and divide it by 365, which will give us roughly the number of years since that epoch. Then we'll output this number. So here we'll have printf, and we'll have percent %f to output a floating point number, followed by backslash n. Then we'll output this value here, and we'll save our program, and compile it, and run it. And we get 54.183223, which makes sense because we're part of the way into the year 2024, which is 54 years after January 1st, 1970. And notice that the number of seconds has gone up since the last time we ran the program. Now the number of seconds has gone up by more than the length of the video would suggest because I paused it in between, but we can still see how the function works here. So in example code, we'll often see the time function called in this way to provide what's called a seed value to the SRAN function as part of random number generation in C. So if we include the stdlib.h library, this library includes a function called rand, which is going to return a random integer in the range of zero to some very large positive integer. But because C uses what's called pseudo random number generation, we do have to provide a different seed value each time the program runs in order to ensure the rand function could return a different sequence of integers each time the program runs. Let's try calling rand without providing a seed value to see the effect. So we'll call rand, and rand is going to return a random integer in the range of zero to some very large positive integer. We'll output the number using printf. We'll have printf and then percent %d to output an int followed by backslash n for a new line, and then we'll output the return value of calling rand. And we'll do this three times. So we'll copy this and paste it, and we'll do it three times. If we save the program and compile it and run it, we'll get these three integers here. We'll try it again. And notice how we get the same integers, which isn't very random. When using the rand function, we would likely want to have a different sequence of random integers returned each time our program runs in order to ensure our program behavior could be different in some random way each time it runs. So because C uses what's called pseudo random number generation, we'll have to call the srand function and pass it a different seed value each time our program runs. Now we could say that the current time should be different each time our program runs, and we could use that as our seed value. So here we'll have time when it's past the argument null, and we'll use the current time as our seed value. If we save our program now and compile it 
and try it out, we get a different sequence of integers. We'll try it again. And again, we now get back a different sequence of random integers from the rin function. So this is a common use case of passing the time function, the argument null. So in this video, we've learned what happens when the time function is past the argument null in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.